one that is curious, one that wants to inspire. And so once we had that culture established at Fairhope East, I knew we were ready. But then came all the documentation. But here's where the transformation really happened. It was the kids. Because when you start forming these STEAM, that science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, it is a great equalizer. So everybody has a different gift. And when you put them in these groups where they have to apply what their teacher has been teaching all quarter from English language to science and math and social studies, all of those things come into question on a STEAM project. And so the first thing is they have to identify a problem. They have to ask themselves, how can I improve this? Like going from a rotary dial telephone to the cell phones that we, somebody had to have the curiosity to figure that out. So what STEAM is really doing is developing problem solvers, which is what the greatest generation, our World War II vets, discovered they were problem solvers. And somewhere along the way, Google and Siri, or with Siri, whatever her name is, took over the, the logic and the reasoning. So we are getting right back down to that. They, they study all day long, and then at the end of the quarter, we test how much they can apply those skills to a real world problem. I flip back to the 210 uh, BP disaster. We still work on what substance will absorb oil the best. Test it. Test the hair that you cut. Test the cotton balls. See which one. But here's another beautiful thing that happens. They learn how to fail. And they know they're going to survive failure. Failure is not making a B instead of an A. Failures did I try my best? Did I look at this? Did I question? Did I work with my colleagues? Did I listen intently? It's working. I'm delighted to be a STEAM school. It was the work of many. I'm so privileged to work beside these guys. So thank you very much. For Fairhope West, it was a five-year process, and I just want to thank two of the 15, two of the 15 members from the professional learning team for STEAM that came. This is Nicole Arnold and this is Leslie Davis. And these two right here are fine examples of the educators that are working for you and they are awesome. So, yes. pictures in just a second with it, with your board members if you, you guys want to come down we're going to take some pictures mr. Tyler did you want to say a few words <laughs> well I'll, I'll go ahead and stand that way but to watch these schools go after these uh, accomplishments uh, it, it makes you very proud because when you go into these schools there is a difference that there's a difference in the culture the atmosphere the environment the drive of these teachers uh, and these administrators to accomplish something such as STEAM, STEM, wherever they're going with that, is just a testament, I think, to uh, our board's uh, willingness to say, principals, research, hire the best, recommend the best, and, and let's hold everybody accountable. And, and this is just a, another great example of what's going on in Baldwin County Schools. I know we've got other schools now that have started this process, and, you know, whoever's around in two years, five years from now when, when it's accomplished, uh, hopefully we'll be standing right here uh, excited uh, about the schools, middle schools, high schools, not just elementary that have accomplished this. So uh, I, I just, I'm as proud as I, Baldwin proud. That's what I am. So. <laughs> we'll take them to your pictures. teachers or whoever, if anyone else come up with a picture too. Okay, Mr. Tyler, we'll take these right up here. She said, she said, we got those. Okay, y'all want to, um, one of them? Yeah, that's okay. 
Ready? One, two, one, two, three. Thank you. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, y'all come on in. Okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. Miss Dawson, one more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, we got a couple more. Yeah. Um, so, you, just to, for a little clarification, um, for Dr. Moore, uh, who had the STEM STEAM, um, she also has a Lighthouse distinction. So she's going to talk about that. So that's why she didn't speak um, for that. So the next uh, accom or accommodations we're doing are the Leader in Me Lighthouse, and I'll call the schools up one more time. We have Elsinore Elementary, Robert Stell Elementary. Foley Elementary and W.J. Carroll Intermediate. And some great news tonight uh, for W.J. Carroll and Miss Dana Bottoms. She just received a word this week that they got their recertification. So she's really excited about that. When Chastity asked me to speak, and Anthony said I could only say five words, so um, he knew that they better not let me speak for both of them because it might take too long. But um, we are, I'll just bounce off of kind of what Carol said. This year with COVID, we decided if we were going to kind of be locked in, we were going to make this the best year ever. So we ended up starting the Lighthouse process and then after we started that, um, it's married so closely that we thought we're just going to take advantage of this and we're going to do the STEM certification because we'd already been working on it. So I just wrote something down so I wouldn't go on so long. And just to explain to you a little bit about what it is that we did. So the Lighthouse can be found all over the world. Standing tall, they provide direction and guidance to ships searching for harbor. And each lighthouse has its own unique design that enhances the wide variety of landscapes they protect. But ships aren't the only things that need guidance. Schools and students do too. But in a sea of obstacles standing in the way of success, a light that offers direction towards the shore can be hard to find. But for a leader in me school, there's a natural progression towards a standard we call lighthouse. Schools who achieve Lighthouse certification shine as an example of the Leader in Me process taken to its deepest and most impactful implementation. Becoming a Lighthouse school is a whole school transformation. This happens when students and teachers feel empowered to become leaders and develop life skills based on the seven habits. The seven habits become so embedded in the school culture that they feel like a natural part of the school day. The seven habits are timeless principles of personal and interpersonal effectiveness. And wow, did we get tested with that this school year. Every child is capable. Every child is a leader. And Leader in Me teaches to be self-reliant, take initiative, plan ahead, set and track goals, prioritize their time, manage their emotions, be considerate of others, express their viewpoints, resolve conflict, find solution, value differences and live a balanced life. When I first read that, I thought, yeah, I've been, this is about to start my 30th year in education. I spent 17 years in the classroom and this is start my 13th year 
as a school administrator and I've used a lot of programs through the past. I really didn't know how this was going to work out because I'd never heard of Leader in Me when I first came. But then I had a child in my office and I said, he got in trouble at PE, I had him in there for discipline and I asked, okay, what should you have done differently? And he looked at me and he said, I should have thought win-win. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is working. So then I started asking students other questions and they were answering and I knew that it was being embedded in our culture and climate. So I had a student one time that we were putting him in the car and he said, I hope you sharpen the saw this weekend, Dr. Moore. And I was like, oh my gosh, this really is working. So we went all in at Foley Elementary School and we took advantage of a year that I'm sure that most of us will never experience in our life again. And I'm very proud to say that we worked for three years to get Leader in Me and we also worked for that three years to get STEAM certified. And I could not be more proud to be the principal at Foley Elementary School. And I have to tell you, I could not be more proud than to work for a board like this because I was never treated this way in another county to where they said, you go, you do what you think's best, do best practice at your school and you'll be successful. And I cannot thank Mr. Tyler and Hope enough because it has been a blessing because I was almost at the point of just saying, I wanna retire, this is getting too much. And then when I came to Baldwin County, it was a breath of fresh air and I'm just so excited to be here. So thank y'all. Um, I'm not really prepared to tell you anything as grand as that. You did a good job setting everybody up. Um, but I can tell you for my little school, um, Leader in Me is really the program that runs everything that we do. It's the foundation that we lay down first and then all of our other procedures are built on top of that. And it really is so different from when I went to school and everything was from the top down. Teaching was from the top down. Now teaching is all across. We have student voice and choice in everything we do. And this year our big push is parent engagement. So um, we'll have a lot of family things on campus this year and teaching the seven habits to our families. And so we'll try to invite you guys if y'all would like to come out to some of our events this year as well. And we do absolutely thank you so much for your support for Leader and Me, it's made a big difference. I wanted to say a little bit about recertification just in case you're not aware what that is. We became a lighthouse school two years ago and it's not something you just keep. It's not a status you just get to have and have it forever. You have to go through a process again every two years to basically do the application all over again and to show that you are still living the seven habits and you're going even further with it. So as we were first lighthouse, um, you know, we were concerned more with the habits and now we're in the paradigms and the effective principles of Leader and Me. And it is a community thing. That is the thing. Your goal is to not just have it with your students, but to have it with your parents and your entire community. And as Michelle said, you hear your parents say it, like the parent that calls and said, Miss Bottoms, I was not proactive this morning. My child doesn't have their lunch money. I did not begin the day with the end in mind, and this is definitely not a win-win. <laughs> you know? And they speak it, and that's where you know you're being successful, is it's not just in your building. And every time we have visitors, that's the other thing. They walk in our buildings, they don't know us, they may come for professional development, or they may come to be a student teacher, or they may come to be a sub, and they'll say, I've never felt like this when I visit a school. I've never heard such positivity. I've never really seen a school family, but this is a school family. And it's really the Leader in Me process that gets you there. So we appreciate y'all continuing to support us in it. And again, it's a great endeavor. And I love that our district is a Leader in Me district. So thank y'all. I think really the, the programs that we've got going on in our schools, STEM and STEAM, we're encouraging that. The resources are there. Uh, I was at Mega this week to hear some of our people engaging with employees from other systems and those employees really taken back about, I mean, you get all these resources, they support you in doing this. How did that happen with Leader and Me or STEAM or STEM? 
that's just what Baldwin County is about. It's still a family. Uh, we care about our students. We care about education. Uh, we do our best to recruit the best and hire the best and keep the best. So uh, couldn't be much more proud of, of all of these accomplishments that you're hearing tonight, board. Take some pictures, sir. Where's <laughs> <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, man. You can look at me. Okay, ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you, Robert Steele. Okay. You ready? One, two, three. That's the fun stuff. <coughs> so proud of um, of all of our schools and, and principals and faculty and all of the employees, the support staff that are on each of these campuses participate just as much in uh, the growth of a school and the change of a culture as the teachers and the students in the classroom. So um, just great stuff.
Yes, right. Because uh, the state, about. the state needs to understand pre-K, how important pre-K is. Yeah, yes, it should be, yeah, it should be it should funded. Be. You know, the disappointing thing about that, Mr. Mark and, and Shannon, is conferences and, and legislative meetings I go to during the spring, the number of superintendents across the state, they're on in favor of pre-K. That's what disappoints me. So they're not in favor? Not in favor? Not in favor, yeah. Why? Why? Uh, they, they just feel like it's, it's one more thing that they have to deal with. Uh, you know, that's it, what we do. It, 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 that's what the, it's not that's fully what their job funded, is. and so they, you know, uh, but it's the, the funding is such a big issue as well about the children. You know, that's the case. The state needs to fund K four fully, fund pre K. Yeah. It's important. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Um, okay. Um, Agenda item uh, number six, approval of the minutes. We have to approve the minutes from the June 24th uh, regular board meeting. Uh, you have those minutes in hand. Motion to approve minutes. Second. Motion from Ms. Colley, second from Mr. Stewart. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And the minutes are approved. Um, we have a presentation, John. Okay, on the public uh, examiners. Mr. Brian Wheeler is here from the uh, Department of Public Examiners to give the annual report. Okay. All right. Thank you. I apologize in advance. Mine's not nearly as interesting as the last, <laughs> nor am I the speaker that they are. But um, as you all know, we are required, uh, the state examiners of public accounts, to come to your first meeting every year after your audit is released to present it. Um, and that's what I'm doing tonight. I appreciate y'all giving us a, a spot on the agenda to do so. Uh, we are here to present the um, audit for FY20, um, and it's available on its entirety, or in its entirety on our website, examiners.alabama.gov. It was released on June the 25th. Um, we conduct all our audits in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards and government auditing standards for our purpose of rendering an opinion own your financial statements and determine whether that the board has complied with applicable laws and regulations. Um, we also audit your federal programs in accordance with uniform guidance. Um, for 2020, we issued an unmodified opinion on the um, financial and federal side. And what that means is it's a clean opinion. There were no issues with the audit. Uh, we also didn't um, note any matters to indicate that the board had not complied in all material respects with applicable laws and regulations. And I think we audited five of your federal programs and they're listed in the audit. Um, so all that information is available in there. So what all that means is that it was a good audit. Um, and I just um, would like to say thanks to John and the entire staff um, for their cooperation. I know every year we're I know the auditors are not the group you want to see coming, <laughs> but uh, we always are made to feel welcome and we appreciate your cooperation, all the staff. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. That. Thank you. John keeps us on our toes. <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> all right. Um, delegations, Miss um, Moser. Yes. Um, let me mention it this time as well. Um, for some time, we have always had to rely on uh, Ms. Coe here behind me to help us keep an eye on time. And so a couple of months ago, several months ago, uh, we were able to, to get a different type of program, which helps us. Um, it's good to keep in mind that that while we're here, although we want to be polite, we certainly want to listen to anything everyone has to say. We, we understand that. At the same time, uh, we also have a great deal of business that we have to transact. And um, we had a, a nice long meeting on Tuesday. We have another one tonight. And sometimes 
the time can go on and on for us. Um, but in order to accomplish both of those items successfully, that is to hear from our constituents and at the same time finish our business in a timely manner, it's really necessary that we all kind of keep an eye on time. Um, I realize it may may seem to some of you that we spent uh, a great deal of time or honoring our principals and our teachers and talking about this program. Uh, however, uh, surely you understand that is our work and that is what we are here to support the most. So, but I will give you just quickly, uh, Homer, if you could run through it for me so everyone will have an idea of, Kurt, of how this works. Uh, you'll see a little bar code and easy to see up here. The first bar is your first minute, it's blue. Uh, the second bar is yellow, yellow, um, which is your second minute. The third minute uh, will be indicated by a red bar which crosses across the bottom and has a little phrase on it, please start winding up your points. So if we can all ad adhere to that, that will, that will help us all. So. Um, Thank you for indulging me in that explanation. And uh, Ms. Mosier, if you would introduce yourself, please, and where you're from, and the floor is yours. And I'll try to stay out of the red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Charmaine Moser from Spanish Fort, and I taught for 25 years in the Mobile and Baldwin school systems, mostly at the middle school level. I have four grandsons who are graduates of Spanish Fort High School. I'm here today because I'm very concerned about the changes that may be mandated by the federal government for the curriculum in our schools in Baldwin County, in Alabama, and throughout the nation in the form of critical race theory. These changes have already been endorsed by the National Education Association. CRT has been described as an attempt to use race as a mechanism for redefining our society redefining what it was based on and how it impacts everybody. And it wants our people to believe that race is the most critical determinant of who you are and what happens to you and our society, as if the color of one's skin is the primary indicator for success in life. An initial incursion by the federal government into the Alabama state's educational system occurred in 2013 when Alabama adopted Common Core standards, but the state rescinded adoption in November 2013. Governor Robert Bentley cited federal interventions as a reason for his opposition, saying he was opposed because of, quote, federal control of our educational system, and I'm opposed to the Common Core because of the potential for federal intrusion, unquote. The state's curriculum, now called the College and Career Ready Standards, is still aligned with the Common Core standards. The adoption of critical race theory by the federal government could well be the second federal intrusion into the Alabama education system, which should support our strongly held cultural beliefs. It would be yet another example of the central government telling us how to raise our children. If our governor and legislature do not strongly oppose a mandate to adopt CRT, Alabama educational values may well be destroyed. I now have a great grandson for whom public schools may not be a viable choice when I consider what teachings the federal government may attempt to impose on our children. But listening to the standards Dr. Moore mentioned in the Lighthouse Strategy, it seems that Baldwin County is on the right path. I urge you to remember these two quotations regarding education, which are vitally important. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. And give me four years to teach your children the seed I have sown, and it will never be uprooted. Vladimir Lenin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Liu, I understand that you wanted to speak tonight. Is, is it to uh, another issue? Um, No. 
there. Yeah. Uh, well, if we are still addressing concerns over um, CRT and what the state may do or Baldwin County, if, if you choose to address that, um, Dr. Lou, why don't you go ahead and, and use your three minutes from that? I, I think we, um, I recognize, you know, some of the um, persons with you this evening uh, that were also there uh, Tuesday night. I, um, yes. I, I would, would understand from that that you probably feel the same way on this issue. Is that? I think that's a safe statement. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Dr. Well, Lou. Appreciate it very much. Thank you again for giving us an opportunity. Um, <clears throat> the other day I handed to you a resolution. I circled a particular part of it. Mm -hmm. It basically said we explicitly reject the belief that the United States of America continues to be a racist country, that Alabama continues to be a racist state. Okay. During the board meeting on Tuesday, and you can take a look at it if they can ever get their technology right to put it back up on, on the screen. But board members talked about the question about whether or not Alabama is a racist state or not. My feeling here is, is that, and again, whatever you all decide to do about this, this is a major issue. It's a sensitive issue, but it also has to be recognized that if we're going to define ourselves as a racist state, then what are the measurements along those lines that we are racist? I've mentioned this to you all before when George Williams and I were here. We want to approach this in a biracial way, but the argument that George made and that we're making is that to continue to call Alabama a racist state, run the reel back to 1963, you've got George Wallace in the door, you've got the KKK killing black children in the church, and you've got Bull Connor doing the hoses and the dogs. That's not who we are today, and I think that the measurement of where we are today has to be along the lines of what I've suggested before. You've had a social and political revolution in the country that takes you into a very different world, and that different world, in my view, takes Alabama out of this problem in terms of the argument that has been made by one of the board members. She basically says that, um, in the end, in her good conscience, she could not, excuse me, she could not agree that Alabama was not a racist state. The question before us is the degree to which we have moved past the past. And I would argue that any resolution that you deal with needs to be able to reflect a degree of hope that we are moving in the right direction and that for those reasons I've suggested in terms of social and political revolution that manifests itself in many different ways which again I'm not going to repeat what I said before but I think at the heart of this is the recognition that the United States and Alabama are moving in the right direction is critical towards thinking through where you want to go with your resolution. Thank you. Um, Dr. Lou, just, just to clarify for anyone who might misunderstand or anyone who doesn't know, you were talking early in your conversation about the State Board of Education board, yeah. right. having that you, conversation, yeah. not, not no, us. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, it okay. was, that's what I referenced. Try to see right. it. Now, Trish Powell did have an article. If you haven't seen it, I'll send it to you all. You can take a look at it. But it's, it's clear what's going on with this. It's, it's a difficult proposition, I understand, but we need to make sure that we're addressing things from the standpoint of hope and change, not going back to the past and say, oh my God, it's over, we, we, we can't do anything. So. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. All right, uh, we are at, I believe, number nine. Uh, Mr. Tyler, uh, amendments to the agenda. Yes, ma'am. Amend number one, bids proposals. Number 10, leave of absence of personnel. Number 11, retirement and resignation of personnel. Number 13, transfer and intent to transfer personnel. Number 14, employment of personnel. Number 15, extra work for extended periods. Add number 17, administrative appointments. Number 18, preliminary resolution authorizing a warrant purchase agreement. Number 19, land acquisition executive session item only. I move we amend the agenda. 
Okay, second by Ms. Lindsay. Uh, I'm sorry, motion by Mr. Chris and Barry. Uh, any questions or discussion, anything? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the amend uh, agenda is approved and amended. Agenda item one, bid proposals. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve to rescind the bid award for surplus technology and award to the second highest bidder meeting specifications and approve the bidders meeting specifications for other goods and services for the system as amended and stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion by Mr. Myrick. A second, Mr. Johnson. <coughs> Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item two, membership renewal, Alabama Association of School Boards, AASB 2021-2022. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to pay the cost of membership in the Alabama Association of School Boards for the 2021-2022 fiscal year as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion from Ms. Lindsay. Second from Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item three, AASB Legal Assistance Fund for 2021-2022. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve to pay the cost of membership in the Alabama Association of School Boards Legal Assistance Fund for the 2021-2022 fiscal year as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion for Mr. Christenberry. Second. Second for Mr. Stewart. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item four, approval of contract Encore Rehabilitation, Inc. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the contract with Encore Rehabilitation, Inc. for athletic trainer services for middle and high schools as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion by Mr. Myrick. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item five, proposal from Spanish Fort High School to add new secondary course model United Nations. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the new secondary course model United Nations as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Some motion from Ms. Colley, a second from Mr. Stewart. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item six, proposal from Spanish Fort High School to add new secondary course sports media. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the new secondary course sports media as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Second. Motion from Ms. Lindsay, second from Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? Not. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item seven, proposal from Spanish Fort Middle to add new middle school course basic reading, basic math enrichment. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the new middle school course basic reading, basic math enrichment for grades six through eight as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion from Ms. Colley. Second from Ms. Lindsay. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item eight, approval of FY22 LEA parent plan. The superintendent recommends adoption of motion to approve the FY22 LEA parent and family engagement plan as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion for Mr. Myrick. Second from Ms. Colley. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item nine, agreement concerning use of Baldwin County Board of Education facilities as emergency mass care shelters. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the agreement as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Myrick, second by Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? 
If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item 10, leave of absence of personnel. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the leave of absence of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. Motion by Mr. Johnson. Second. Second by Mr. Myrick. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. In item 11, retirement and resignations of personnel. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the retirement and resignations of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Second. Motion for Mr. Myrick, second for Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item 12, termination of temporary and or probationary classified personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the termination of temporary and or probationary classified personnel in accordance with Act Number 2011-270, Students First Act, as provided to board members under separate cover. So move. Motion by Mr. Christenberry. Second by Ms. Colley. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Agenda item 13, transfer intent to transfer personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the transfer intent to transfer of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second. Second by Ms. Lindsay. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Agenda item 14, employment of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the employment of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. Motion by Mr. Johnson. Second. Second by Mr. Stewart. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Agenda item 15, extra work for extended periods. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the extra work of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. <clears throat> motion by Ms. Colley. Second. Second by Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 16, 2021-2022, salary schedule revisions. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the revised 2021-2022 salary schedule as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stewart. Second. Second by Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? Enrollment, enrollment comes into play in a number of situations. Uh, I mean, as far as the number of kids on campus, the number of square feet, and the number of whatever, you know, responsibility is, is greater. How can you put that on okay. the same level as that when the numbers are not the same here? Now, we're close to what a school is. I'm just asking now. I'm Hard to explain to somebody though that's 
not even a lot less, a lot more, you know, larger group. That's my opinion. Any other discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, and any opposed? No. Motion carries. Agenda item 17, administrative appointments. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the administrative appointments as provided to board members under separate cover. Second. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second. Second by Mr. Myrick. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Board, I'd like to say we've added two administrators. Of course, we have Leslie Wheeler, who was interim at Spanish Ford Middle, uh, who is now officially uh, principal at Spanish Ford Middle School. And uh, I know personnel there is very excited. And also, we have one sitting in our audience here uh, <laughs> that were taken from Dr. Michelle Moore from Foley <laughs> Elementary. Uh, Angie Beard is the new principal at Robertsdale Elementary. And very excited. Congratulations. Um, Agenda item 18. Well, I, th I think they've already voted. You've already voted on it. Are we going to vote on 18 is prior to the executive session. Am I correct, Sarah? I'm the, the 18 is 19. 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I messed up. <laughs> It happens. Agenda item 18, preliminary resolution authorizing a warrant purchase agreement. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the attached preliminary resolution authorizing a warrant purchase agreement mm -hmm. and stipulating the agenda exhibit. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second. Well, Mrs. Lindsay. By Ms. Lindsay. Uh, any questions or discussion? This is just career tech, and I just want to say it's also um, preliminary, it's non-bonding, and that the final agreement will come back to the board once the transaction's been complete for official approval. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. At this point... That's it. All right. At this point, uh, there's a need for the board to go into executive session. Um, for the purposes of um, real estate issues. Uh, we will reconvene uh, when the executive session is over. Um, we are. We will, we will come back. It'll be very brief. Okay, 30 to 35 minutes, maybe 40 on the executive session. So I need a motion. Okay. All right. Motion by Mr. Myrick and a second by Mr. Johnson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, all right. We will. Okay. All right, Mr. Myrick uh, will step out of the executive session uh, due to a conflict of interest on uh, the issue that we are discussing. So we'll note that. All right, uh, staff remaining are uh, 